And for now, we will switch into serious thinking mode again with Abdullah, session three, quantum error correction. Thank you all. And thank you, Abdullah. Please take it away. Uh, thank you, Marlo. So how's everybody doing? Uh, do we have the quantum error correction people here? And are they ready? So I can share my screen. Everyone is very ready. <laughs> Great, I see some thumbs up. Oh, is there Q Gold? We will make it happen. And people say they are doing well. I would say, let's get started, Abdullah. Everyone is eager. Okay, so ready for QEC lecture, let's go. So, uh, let's get it started. Let me close this guy. Okay, so um, today is actually going to be the hardest day of this workshop because we have to cover quite a lot, uh, more than in the previous two sessions and definitely more than the next session, but this is kind of the crux. Uh, we are going to learn about stabilizer codes today. Uh, so these are types of quantum error correcting codes, uh, which are actually the most uh, popular one and the most useful ones right now. So pretty much uh, all codes that are used uh, or researched upon are stabilizer codes. You know, there are some other codes as well, but but these are these, this is where everyone pays attention because they have a lot of nice structure. Uh, they're actually not that difficult to understand, uh, and uh, you know, this they they are very rich. You can create a wide variety of codes. Uh, quantum error correcting codes in this uh, quantum stabilizer formalism. And so would you mind to give a, a brief recap also of the past two sessions, Abdullah? Yeah, and we'll yeah, connect yeah, to yeah. This one? yeah, yeah, I'm going to connect it. So, so, uh, so yeah, so we are going to go through the different aspects of uh, uh, the, the stabilizer formalism, which will require some mathematics uh, on our part. Uh, let me go here and like just think about what we have done uh, in terms of uh, uh, well what we already know so this was our kind of uh, setup for uh, uh, quantum error correction right so alice was sending some uh, state a state of k qubits uh, that she wanted to send to bob and the way she did was she encoded it into a code word of uh, n qubits, and then she sent it to the noisy channel. Bob, on the other hand, you know, uh, did some decoding to uh, figure out what the uh, to estimate a message that Alice was intending to send. And we, if you have done the notebooks, you would have figured out that with uh, there's a there's a uh, that we the, if, if the procedures that we dis, uh, discussed uh, last time are actually able to increase the probability that Bob receives the correct message. So the procedures that we learned last time were the repetition code for bit flips and the repetition code for phase flips, right? And the short code, and they were uh, of increasing kind of, well, the first two were uh, were the same in some sense, both of them, one of them could only correct bit flip errors, the, uh, the other one could only correct phase flip errors and the short code could uh, correct all sorts of errors. So if you, if you recall, we have, uh, th during all of that time, we did these kind of four things that I've written down. So we we discussed the encoding procedure for each of the uh, quantum error correcting codes, right? We uh, uh, discussed how to do syndrome measurements uh, for uh, for the various codes. Uh, and we figured out the decoding, right? So this was, I mean, the decoding part is where you, you take the syndrome measurements and you correct your uh, code word and then you go back to your original uh, or, or you compute a psyche. Uh, and we also, like if, you, if you've done the quiz by now, you should be very familiar with what logical gates for quantum matter correcting codes are as well. So these are op operating at a higher level. So which is why they're called logical gates. And uh, I think I think a big question that we discussed last time was that which errors are correctable by the code, right? So if I mean if you have had questions about any of this, uh, you know this would be a great time to ask. I do I see questions? No. Uh, yeah. 
So, okay. So we, we are going to work in this formalism, but what we want to do is like, like last time when I talked about the repetition code or, uh, you know, the shore code, I simply just gave you a procedure. I told you how to do the encoding. I told, told you how to do syndrome measurements. I told you how to do decoding. And you know, some, it had just come from like, uh, from just come from me, like, or well, I, I was transferring the words of uh, some other scientists who had come up with these things. Uh, but there was no systematic procedure to it. Like, you, if, if, like knowing the repetition code or the short code, you can't just come up with other codes as well, right? There's, there's no process for it. You, you don't have a framework for what, how, how, do, you, how do you construct uh, other codes, which are good codes as well, you know, which, uh, which can perform well. So our goal is to systematically build uh, quantum error correction codes. Uh, so uh, let's let's kind of dive into that. Um, so um, this is not part of the notebooks, but I think this should have been clear by now to everyone. Like we saw this picture in the classical uh, uh, case as well, and in the quantum case, these, this makes as, as sense as well that what Alice is trying to send is, is something, a state in the message space, space, right? So this is what? This is the Hilbert space of uh, qubits, right? So dimension two, and we, we have K copies of that Hilbert space uh, because they are K qubits. Similarly, on, on this side, uh, we have uh, a Hilbert space of size N, right? And the code, is actually uh, a subspace of this code space, which is called, uh, which is itself called the code. And uh, this, I mean, uh, the, the size of this set is exactly the size of this set. And the idea is that everything over here can be mapped to everything over here, right? So this is, this is, uh, um, and, and, and I, this is actually an invertible transformation. So you can go from here and then you can go back to here and you get the same result. So I, I hope this is not confusing. If you have any questions about this, uh, ask now. Uh, or Well, I mean, as people type, I will, I will uh, check back and see if you have any questions. So, so we are going to come back to this Hilbert space view of uh, quantum error correction cores in, in, in a few slides, but uh, for now, let's continue. So, uh, uh, what we're going to do is because we are working with qubit codes, we will need the poly matrices. So uh, you know the poly matrices well. You know that uh, multiplying them have these sort of relationships, uh, you know, x, y equals to iz, yz equals to ix, zx equals to ix. Uh, if, if you don't remember, I, I have this uh, nice trick for uh, this that I will start once, uh, which is that uh, it's, it goes in the circle. So X times Y is Z, uh, iota Z. Uh, y times uh, Y times Z is iota X. And, you know, Z times X is iota X. So if you just go around in a circle, you can go. And then if you go in the other direction, uh, for example, Y times X is actually minus iota Z. Uh, and that emerges because you're going in the opposite of the circle. So you pick up a minus sign. Okay. Um, the other uh, uh, interesting property of poly matrices, besides their multiplication property, uh, you know, and this nice structure here, is that uh, they have good, uh, they have these nice commutation relations, right? So the idea is that if I have this set of, uh, and I, I identity to my set in, uh, in, uh, plus the poly matrices, and I'll, I'll just call the whole thing poly matrices, is that uh, if I take any two guys out of here, uh, they will either commute or anti-commute. So either th that means commute means that PQ is equal to QP and anti-commute uh, means PQ equals to minus QP. So, I mean, we have already seen something here that if I said P equals to X and uh, Q equals to Y, then, you know, uh, PQ is equals to iota Z and QP is equals to minus iota Z, right? So in this case, uh, X and Y actually anti-commute, right? Because this is second case. But, and you will see that in this one dimensional case, at least uh, the only possibility for commutation is that I set one guy to identity and the other guy to anything else. So 
I mean, it can be any of the other three. For example, if it's still y, then i y is ordered of, of course just uh, y. But let's write it like this. So p q is uh, y, and then q p is obviously also y. So that that is the first uh, situation. So so that you know that is commutation and anti commutation. Um, we can also kind of uh, 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 look at uh, tensor products of uh, poly matrices and uh, sorry, uh, let me just look at the questions. Did I hear it correct? Ontological basis. I did not use the word ontological basis at all. I don't know what you're referring to. And there's not even a thing as a basis, a ontological basis. Uh, uh, this tensor product of the Hilbert spaces is on the assumption of the independence of bit flips. Is a situation where multiple qubits are independent, dependent on each other to flip. Uh, so uh, the tensor product of Hilbert spaces is is has nothing to do with the kind of errors that occur. So if you have n qubits, you will or k qubits, you will always have a, a tensor product of k Hilbert spaces to represent their state. Uh, but uh, if you're talking about the noise models, uh, then uh, indeed there are, uh, in the real world, it actually does happen that multiple qubits are, uh, the, like instead of independent noise, you get dependent noise where multiple qubits are likely to flip together. And that kind of noise is much, much harder to correct. Uh, and uh, so, so we are not concentrating on right now. Uh, Ron has a question. If X and Y are poly matrices in Python, do you compute X, Y as Y at X? That is the right to left computation? No, 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 no. We will, uh, in Python, we will continue to write uh, X, Y as X at Y. Okay, so you you written this wrong. The, it's the other way. We'll, the, computation, the computation will still proceed the same way. Um, Oh, uh, I guess we uh, we did the opposite thing when we were uh, doing classical, but in in the quantum thing, we will we will uh, go sen sensibly and go from left to right. Yeah. Does dependent noise of qubits happen due to entanglement? Uh, uh, no, uh, we don't call it. Uh, 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 entanglement, the uh, but it does happen. So uh, one, uh, what I mean, if you think of a real quantum computer, they if you if you build them, uh, you know. So for example, if you think of a su superconducting qubits, uh, which are driven by currents, uh, so you have circuitry that go connects different qubit, for example. So if there's some kind of flux in that circuitry that uh, in the wire that connects to qubits, for example, then it can cause an error in both qubits at the same time, for instance. Uh, so David, uh, he's he's not talking about tensor products here. Uh, where, where No, I guess you did delete your comment, so that's fine. Uh, so Abdullah is talking about something or, okay, so I think I'm gonna continue. Uh, Uh, well, I mean, I have, Google has superconducting qubits, right? So, oh, oh no, I, I guess you're talking to Marlow. So I'll I'll continue my journey and look at questions in a second. So anyway, uh, this uh, this commute I should just say commutation relations relations of tensor uh, products. So we're just doing some background uh, right now. Uh, in case you're wondering what we're doing. So, uh, 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 so we just need a couple of slides before we uh, jump into more uh, serious stuff. So computation relations. So, I mean, this kind of relationships also hold if, if you also have tensor products of these guys, okay? Of any, any 
uh, length. For example, if I have x tensor x as my p and q equals to z tensor z, I do this commute or anti commute? That is my question to you. X tensor X and uh, Z tensor Z. Do they commute or not? Do they commute or anti commute? So, do they commute or anti commute? I will wait for two other people who are typing. They have a plus sign commute then. Uh, well, yeah, so I mean, let's let's kind of do this uh, for people who are not clear perhaps. So if I do PQ, you can you, you realize that this is XZ tensor XZ, which is actually equal to iota Y. Uh, no, this is minus iota Y, right? Because uh, we are going counterclockwise on a circle. This is minus iota Y, which is equal to uh, iota square y tensor y. But if I do QP, that is equal to zx tensor zx uh, equals to iota y tensor iota y equals to iota square y tensor y. Right? So what ends up happening is that so we have PQ equals to QP, so commute. What ends up happening is that you these two minus signs cancel out, right? And which is why you get the same result. And this is something, I mean, uh, this is the easy thing to remember is that uh, at least for X and Zs, like X, if if in between your, if you have a long string of polys and another long string of polys and you're multiplying them, them together, uh, basically if uh, two, there are Xs that coincide with the Zs at two locations, then you will have this sort of minus sign canceling. And uh, then at the commute, if not, uh, then they don't, uh, they anti-commute. Uh, is I, X, Y, Z an abelian group? No, it is not an abelian group. It's not even a group. We will, we are going to talk about that in the next slide uh, about this group uh, uh, guy, but it's not a group because uh, multiplying X, Y gives you iota Z and iota Z is not equal to Z. So, Anyway, uh, so uh, I'm going to talk about some math. I'm going to talk about some group theory. Uh, I know some of you are not familiar with it, and this will be a kind of a fast introduction. But I'm just going to tell you the central message of the next few slides. Uh, so you don't like like I'm going to talk about a lot of math, but that math is not that all that structure is not important. The crucial, well, it is important, but the critical thing in all of that is that. Uh, Multiplying poly matrices uh, gives other poly matrices only. Right. This this uh, this observation that multiplying poly matrices gives other poly matrices only is all that we kind of really need for uh, for the next uh, you know uh, part of math and the the other uh, additional stuff uh, around it but you know uh, th this is kind of the critical thing that whether you have tensor products of uh, polys and you multiply those together uh, or you have single polys and you multiply them together you always get other polys right uh, like if you have some polys and you like x into x and equal uh, times z into z z tensor z is not going to give you a hadamard or an S gate or C naught or something like that. It will always give you other polys. And that is kind of the uh, thing we are going to need now. And when we are talking, going to talk about uh, uh, 
uh, some group theory. So, David, you need to uh, give me two poly polys to actually multiply together. You have just given me one guy, right? So, anyway, so a group. So, uh, I guess you're familiar with vector spaces, right? So, you, a vector space is a set. Uh, on which you can add the vectors together or you can multiply them with some numbers and you still get other vectors, right? So group is kind of a very similar structure. In fact, it's a much simpler structure to than, than uh, uh, vector spaces. The idea is that you have a set G whose elements you can multiply and th that, that multiplication satisfies a bunch of axioms or properties, which is that here's my set G and if I have two elements G, I, and G, J inside it, uh, any two elements, GIJJ, right? So the bunch of uh, the whole bunch of elements inside it, but two of them are GI and GJ. And if I multiply GI and GJ, I get GK, which is also inside this uh, set, right? So I don't, uh, I don't get something outside the set by multiplying any two guys inside. So this this property is called closure, right? And we this is what I just discussed that multiplying poly matrices give other poly matrices only, right? So we'll see this again and again in. Uh, in multiple contexts that multiplying polys gives other polys. So, you know, this kind of works. Uh, the other uh, 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 axiom that group satisfy is there's the identity element inside this set, right? So what does this mean? This means that E times GI will equal to GI, right? So that's how identities work. In group theory languages, identity is written E, but I mean, later on, when I start talking about polygroups, I'll start using uh, the, the letter I to represent it. Um, and then we also have the notion of inverse, right? That for every GI inside my G or GK or whatever, I, I have an inverse element, which is also inside the set, right? So it's not outside the set. And uh, that kind of works. So, I mean, what, what is the inverse? Inverse means that GI, GI inverse equals to identity, right? So this also works. And then associativity is, um, I mean, uh, just basically means I should write it down. It's the most trivial property for us because we're dealing with matrices that if I have three guys, GI, GJ, and GK, then that is equal to uh, the i, g, j, g, k, right? That if I multiply, if I want to multiply three guys together, then I can either multiply the first two together first and then multiply the result with the third guy, or I can multiply the se second and third guy together first and then multiply the result with gi uh, with the first guy. Um, and this is, I mean, this is kind of like trivial property, so we don't have to worry about it uh, for for matrices at least. So I hope you don't have any questions about these these this idea of groups. I think when we look at these examples of the poly group, etc., this will become uh, much easier to process. So no, uh, that will when we multiply, we mean. Uh, the regular matrix multiplication, right? So the kind of multiplication that we have seen here, right? So this is constructing elements and this is multiplying. So ordinary multiplication. So this is ordinary multiplication over here and this is tensor uh, products. So let me, uh, let's kind of do like, look at this. So there's a whole sequence of polygroups and the simplest one of them is this P1. I'll write this with fancy P. That's also it's written in notebooks, uh, where it has these 16 elements. Okay. So you can kind of see what those 16 elements are. Uh, so I, X, Y, Z, each with either plus minus or uh, plus minus one or plus minus iota sign attached to that. Right. So four into four is 16. So you have 16 elements here. And these guys, I claim, actually form a group, okay? And we can do that by checking the properties, right? So we can check that if I take two guys over here, right? So we'll go through all the properties. If I take two guys over here, right? So multiplying polys gives other polys, right? We just discussed this. So, I mean, I can uh, write down an example that, for example, I mean, x, uh, iota x 
time say uh, minus z is equals to uh, well so this is minus iota x z which is equal to minus iota x z is uh, minus iota iota y which gives me um, uh, plus uh, minus minus y right i hope i've done this correctly so you get uh, something like this which is also inside the group right so we i start with two elements um, inside this uh, inside the set and i get another element which is inside the set Yeah, okay, I don't see any further questions, so I'll, I'll move on. So uh, that was the first property, right? So we can see closure. Uh, identity element, right? So, I mean, this is easy. Plus i over here, right, is the identity element, not minus i, only plus i. And this will become important, right? If you multiply things with minus i, you pick up an overall minus sign, which is not what we want. We want things to exactly come out to the same. Inverses. So what is the inverse of any of these guys? If P is in uh, this uh, fancy P1, what is the inverse of P? Uh, well, I, I don't need this. So, I mean, example, uh, we can write down. So, what is the inverse of X equal to? Yeah, so David correctly identifies that. In, Actually, poly matrix is quite nice. The, the these uh, these uh, plus sign uh, poly matrices have, uh, you know, the inverse is actually equal to them uh, themselves, right? So z inverse is equal to z, and then uh, I mean, if you want to construct the inverse of uh, some more complex thing, so for example, iota x, right? So um, you know that the inverse of x is itself, you just have to uh, realize that. Uh, I have you have to multiply it with minus iota, right? That will give you. So you can verify that if you multiply I iota x with minus iota x, you will get identity, right? Because the minus iota uh, will uh, times iota will give you plus one. And associativity is trivial, right? So you know that matrix uh, matrix multiplication. is associative right so this is this one is quite easy so all of so these 16 guys obey all of these properties right and because they obey these properties therefore they are the poly uh, they are a group right and we call them uh, call this poly group of uh, uh, with uh, n equals to 1 Okay, now let's look at a slightly more difficult example. So now we have polygroup P, uh, P2, which is defined to be uh, where P0, P1, in some. So we are saying that poly group P2 consists of all tensor products, two, uh, uh, size two tensor product of poly matrices itself, right? So if you take two of these 16 guys, any of two of these 16 guys, and you multiply them, uh, tensor product them together, you and you take all such uh, products, you get the poly group P2. Can somebody tell me how many elements are in here? What is the size of this? Uh, 16 square is quite large. Uh, P0 and P1. So P0 could be, for example, X. Uh, P1 could be iota Y, you know, uh, or P0 could be minus Z and P1 could be, you know, uh, identity. Uh, and you're just taking the tensor product. So all possible tensor products of polymatrices of, well, 
of two pollinators is taken together. So, no, so, so sorry. So, uh, Bakao and uh, Muhammad Raza are correct, right? So, I mean, the way to think about it is, is quite simple. You have uh, P0, which is part of P1, right? And there are the size over here, 16, right? And uh, P1 is also part of P1, right? So I have 16 possibilities here and 16 possibilities here. So, no, okay, so sorry. I'm 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 being wrong. So that that does not work because uh, because I mean you have these signs and then some of these signs will when you multiply things together the signs simplify and multiply together right so these plus and minus iotas and plus and minus ones will simplify to a single sign. Uh, sorry, so that's why I was like that's too large in initially. Uh, Mohammed Reza and uh, the person before him Bakao are not correct. So you can realize that uh, size for size, what we need is that the idea that uh, let's say four, these are four as well. And then you have a phase, which is a four, size four, right? So there will be an overall phase, which will either be plus minus one or plus minus iota. So there are four possibilities there. And then P0, uh, for the first part of this can be uh, x iota x y z, and the second part of this can be iota x y z. So if I do this, I get sixty four. So just the slightly overcounting, uh, sixteen by sixteen is just overcounting my factor of four. Okay. So anyway, uh, I mean, that's not very important. We, that was just to get a sense of how big, how many elements we are talking about. 64 is not that large. Uh, you can actually write them down by hand. But to check that this is a group and this actually works, we just have to go through all the properties, right? So um, let's, I mean, let's look at some uh, examples, right? So, I mean, I should also write down some example elements. So uh, example elements are, for example, Iota x tensor z uh, minus y tensor identity, you know, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And the the first the, uh, property says that uh, if you multiply two guys inside here, you will also get another guy inside here. And this is what, what we have already discussed. Multiplying polymatrices gives other polymatrices, right? And you know how to do this multiplication, sir. So that if I write down my P, which is the first element inside this guy, right? So P is in uh, this fancy P1, and then Q is also in uh, fancy P1. Uh, sorry, it's P2. I'm being dumb. P2. So I'm, I'm taking two guys inside this entire set. So P, I will write down as P0 tensor P1, and Q, I will write down as Q, Q0 tensor Q1, both in uh, P2, right? And if I multiply them together, you know the, the rule is that you multiply the first with the first and second with the second, so you get something like this. So this will be a poly matrix, this will be a poly matrix, right? And which will also be in here, right? So this guy is also in fancy P2. Right, so which is why uh, closure works. Um, I I hope this is clear, right? Uh, that I mean, if I multiply these two guys, for example, together, then you know, uh, I will get another set of polys. Some some z and tensor z, something like that. Uh, the identity. P no is just identity ten times tensor, no, identity tensor identity, right? Uh, the inverse is actually again quite simple. Uh, that 
the inverse of this guy of P inverse is actually equal to, I will take the inverse of the first guy and I will tensor it with the inverse of the second guy. So for example, uh, example, I mean the inverse of uh, iota x tensor z, right? The inverse of this is just as we discussed, the inverse of iota x was minus iota x and the tensor uh, inverse of z is just z itself. So we can do something like this. And then associativity always works. So we don't have to really talk about it. The right-hand side looks wrong. Oh, yes, it does look wrong. It is wrong. Thank you. There's a zero here. I'm really sorry about that. No, uh, yeah, there's a P0 into Q0 and P1 into Q1. P1. Oh my God. Okay, so I copied it from the notebook. So this is wrong. I will fix this in the notebooks as well. Okay, so this is important, right? So error in notebook. Uh, this is what happened uh, yesterday when I, or a couple of days ago when I was, I fixed the index notation and I guess I messed up here. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dawal, for correcting me. Uh, so matrix multiplication over addition is distributive. Uh, tensor product over uh, addition is also distributive, but we're not going to take addition and we are not going to add things ever. Uh, well, we are going to add things, but not really uh, in an important way. So, so, okay. So uh, I, I hope all of this is clear. So I don't see questions, which is either a very bad sign or a very good sign. Uh, but Dhawal says that we all understood. So I will believe him. If, if we don't, if you don't, uh, if, I, if I'm not being clear, please ask. So anyway, uh, you can realize that you can uh, construct the polygroup PN in the same way, right? You, in which you will have tensor products like this, right? So uh, all elements of this form where, uh, P i r in fancy P one. Okay, so the polygroup one. So this is the definition of polygroup uh, n, and you know you can construct it. We don't have to go over the problems. So anyway, the, this was the easy part. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. So the uh, the the uh, difficult part is just talking about. Uh, is coming up now, so or slightly more difficult part, which is that we are going to talk about uh, subgroups. Okay, so if you have a group, okay, any group G, and you know this was my set of elements, and I look at some subset. Okay, so the subset is, for example, H, and if H satisfies group axioms as well, then uh, H is a group. H is a subgroup of G, right? So uh, what does that mean? That means exactly what we have, you know, uh, discussed before that uh, that you know this this H should satisfy all of these properties. So cl closure is the most important one, right? That if you if I multiply elements inside H with themselves, I should still get elements inside H. I should not go outside H into parts of G, right? So remember the G had the uh, idea that if I took any two elements of G and multiplied them together, I was still inside G. But H is like a it's a smaller part of it. That if I multiply elements of H, then I stay inside H. I don't go into outside H, uh, inside, but inside G. So, so I have to select my elements inside G in a, in a special way uh, or care, very carefully so that multiplying them, I remain within 
uh, within that cell. Uh, the other thing is identity, right? So I can't put the identity outside. I have to put the identity inside H. Uh, inverse again. So for every element that I put inside H, I also have to put the inverse of that element inside H. And then associativity all this work. So, right. So uh, let's look at some examples in the context of the polygroup of what these subgroups look like, right? So I will start with, for example, uh, example. So I'll, I'll claim that iota Z is a subgroup of P1. Okay. Why? Because we can check all the properties, right? So uh, I know that, so, so there's only one product here. There are two elements, right? So I can multiply on, on only one possible thing way, which is that, well, uh, I can multiply in two different ways. So iota Z is Z and Z iota is also Z, right? So in both cases, so this is still in, if uh, this is my H, I'm still in H and this is still in H. Right. And then so let's put a pin here. So I mean closure is done, right? Multiplying any two elements inside my uh, H. So now I'm looking at H. Okay. Uh, identity is inside, right? Identity is inside the inverse of. Identity inverse is obviously just identity. Z inverse is just Z. So they're also inside thing and associative as well works. Yeah, so. Oh yeah, sorry, I, uh, I you guys. So uh, David is right, four to the N plus one. Again, the idea is that you have N poly matrices and you multiply them N times and then you have phase factor of four. Um, so I don't see any questions about subgroups. So if you have questions about subgroups and trying to get this, uh, um, ask away. Uh, let me let me uh, give another example of this. So uh, example, because my Yeah, so uh, let's let's think of a bigger example. So here's a here's a kind of not that difficult example. Uh, so I claim that my H is actually equal to uh, is of the form all. So let's write it like this. P is equals to P0 tensor identity tensor identity for P0 in P1 is a subgroup of P. So what am I saying? I'm saying that you have P3, which is the tensor product of three uh, guys together, right? And I'm saying that if I take only the elements, so, so I have P3 here. Uh, let's draw it like this. I have P3 over here, and it has a lot of elements. I'm only going to take the elements of the form, which are of P0, tensor identity, tensor identity, uh, tensor identity, right? And this is going to be my H, uh, which means I'm not taking elements like, you know, X, Z, uh, Y, for example, you know, which is outside, it, which is inside P3, but not inside H. Okay. So again, we can kind of check that all of these uh, properties are satisfied, right? So if uh, you can very easily check that if I multiply uh, something like, P zero 
tensor identity tensor identity with some another element inside h which is of this form right is still in my h right again because uh, it will get t0 q0 tensor identity identity which is still of this form uh, so it's easy to check that identity as well as in here the set t0 equals to identity and you get the overall identity the inverse of every element uh, over here is also here so you can check that i mean you just take the inverse of this guy uh, and tenth of this so you know that's also of the same form so that also works and then associated t as well works all right so does i hope this example makes sense So Dhawal has a good question uh, about subgroups. If H has all the properties of G, then how is it different from G? It, it is different from G because it has fewer elements than G. So G has a, uh, so in this case, you can, for example, check. I mean, we just argued that this has uh, four to the four elements. P3 has four to the four elements, but this H uh, only has uh, 16 elements. That's, that's the difference. Okay, so no, so the condition is that it has an inverse and it's inside that group, right? So if we, that's, yeah, uh, where is it? Uh, so I should write this down specifically that G inverse is in G, right? Uh, and I will specifically say that can be distinct from GI. Uh, but in the case of polys, it actually is generally kind of same, but it's not all this, right? So we notice, for example, here that iota x, uh, the inverse of iota x is minus iota x, which is a distinct element. But that, that's a good question to ask. Uh, No, so double, G, both G and H are sets whose elements you can multiply. So in fact, I should probably just cancel this and write down P1 over here. And I should cancel this uh, out and write P2 over here and then over here, yeah, I should just write down, uh, no. Yeah, so this is G and then H is inside here as well. And then H I correctly labeled. So, um, David has a great question. I really wanna, or comment. So let's look at a counter example, right? So, I mean, it's always, or, or a, so not, sorry, not a, a counter example, a negative example, right? So, uh, iota xz is not a subgroup. Of P1, right? And the reason is, for example, that if I do xz, I get uh, iota, uh, minus iota y, right? And that is not in H, right? So if I, if I don't uh, select my subset correctly uh, to have, uh, so that it's not closed, then, then it's, it's not a, uh, so it's, it's not a sub, right? So no, everything doesn't work. That's very important to understand, so negative. Example. Uh, over here. So, I mean, let me just say let P zero tensor identity tensor identity 
q0 tensor identity tensor identity b in h uh, then Uh, does that clarify? Can't Judith, I hope that helps. Can't all matrices be expressed in the form? No. Uh, obviously not. The last two entries are identity and identity. So in particular, X tensor Z tensor Y is not of this form because the last two elements are not identity. Uh, a Clifford group is a uh, group itself, but I mean not uh, so 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 you need to make sure that you define it correctly. Tawal. So is there any similarity between basin and Lie and subgroups? Uh, there's no concept of basis uh, in in groups or subgroups, but there's a similar notion of generators we will which we'll get to today, hopefully. So yeah, so we're going to move to the next topic. So I'll just wait for people to uh, ask questions, and then uh, I can I can just keep it open here. So Okay, so uh, why do we care about the groups and subgroups? Excellent question. So we are going to construct what are called stabilizer uh, subgroups of the polygroup from which we will construct quantum error correcting codes. Do we have a rule for building subgroups of polymetry or just intuition? Um, so you can construct subgroups in all sorts of ways. Uh, we will look at particular construction, which is called uh, poly uh, stabilizer subgroups or stabilizer groups, as we just call them. We don't uh, use the word sub as much, and they have some additional properties that allows us to narrow narrow it down a little. So we can write down the resultant of X tensor Y tensor Z as X tensor Y tensor Z tensor identity. No, 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 no. So notice that I said that P0 is part of this, uh, this, uh, this poly one, right? So poly one means that it is individual matrices, right? Two by two matrix. It's 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 itself not a product of three guys, and moreover, this is this is a tensor product, right? So this is not just a uh, uh, not just a uh, normal multiplication. So I mean, uh, so you have to be careful about this. Code will not be a subgroup of code space, uh, but the code will be constructed from the uh, subgroup. The codes we will construct will be for specific type of uh, errors. Uh, no, they will construct. Uh, they will be able to uh, uh, correct all sorts of errors that occur in quantum systems. Okay, I think I think we're done with questions. So let's uh, move to topic number two. Right. So where are we? We are on slide twelve, and on slide seventeen, we will see how to construct quantum error correcting codes, okay? So you have to stick with me for five more slides of this, all of this background kind of stuff, but which is also very important background stuff. You know, we are just building up the math 
towards that. Uh, so here's another concept that we need. And you, I think you will, as I give examples, you will see why this, uh, this part is uh, useful. So the other thing of poly matrices is that they have eigenvectors, right? Just the same as uh, any other matrix. But the thing that is very nice about them is that, for example, look, X has eigenvectors plus the plus state and the minus state. And the plus state has an eigenvalue of plus one and the mi uh, minus state has an eigenvalue of minus. Right. Similarly, Y has these plus iota, minus iota states, and Z has zero and one as its eigenvectors. Right. All uh, eigenvalues. Are either plus one or minus one. Right. And I, I haven't written this down, but uh, this also works with tensor products of uh, poly matrices. Uh, so. Uh, they will also have eigenvalues of uh, plus one or minus one. Uh, we can, we can, we'll actually see that in, in, on the next slide. So anyway, this uh, this is background. What is important is stabilized states. So if I take a, a poly in my poly group of size n, right, where n is arbitrary then a state psi such as uh, which has the property that p, p times psi is equal to psi right meaning there is a plus one here right is called a stabilized state of p okay so basically if i can find eigenvectors of of p which have plus one eigenvalue they are called stabilized states of p Okay, they can be more than one. Uh, and so, I mean, so for example, uh, I mean, over, but over here in the, in the one dimensional case, this is one. So plus, let me just write it in black, two, plus is a stabilizer state of X, right? So I'm just uh, defining set terminology that the plus one eigen uh, states, I am just calling stabilize, uh, stabilizer states, okay? So, So uh, I see questions about other stuff. So I'll, I'll just concentrate on this. That, I mean, you can see all of this from over here, but then the last part is quite important that identity is nice. Any state is a plus one eigenvector of uh, identity, right? So therefore, every state is a stabilized state of the identity matrix. Now, um, actually, let's construct this one by one. Yeah, let's do it left, right. So we can also do uh, multiple states, okay? So uh, let's look at a two qubit operator, right? So what uh, our stabilizer states of say X tensor Y, just to start off with, so what do you think is the stabilizer state of uh, X tensor Y? So what I'll do is, I think we just need this. So, and I will post these here. So you have something to refer to. So can you, I mean, the, the hint is that you can kind of use this guy to construct the stabilizer states of X tensor Y.
Okay, so I have an actual question. Just to be clear, the eigenvector of x are plus one and minus one, and so it's a value are eigen plus one. Yes, that is correct. So the question is, what are the stabilized states of x tensor y? What state can I, I mean, I'm asking the question, x times y psi equals to psi, right? So what, and obviously when I write something like this, I mean bracket. So what is psi? Or what could be psi? And you can construct it by looking at something like this, looking at these relations. You have to give me a, a uh, not not values, but uh, like numbers. But you have to give me things. So, Artem, we will get to that. So, we will on slide seventeen. We'll 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 be there. So, Bakao is correct, right? So, what you can do is that I can realize that the Stab uh, stabilizer state of x is plus and the stabilizer state of y is plus i, i right? And uh, therefore, x tensor of i times plus and then plus iota is actually equal to plus plus iota, okay? But that is not all. There is uh, this others that you can, yes. So David has already gotten it, include minus and minus iota as well, right? So, uh, I mean, this one is self-evident, but let's look at the other one. So X tensor Y, and uh, let me actually write these as tensor products. I think it's easier if we, uh, Write these as tensor plus i iota uh, equals to plus. I think I can take more space as well. Tensor plus iota. Okay. So this is one example. Okay. But uh, sorry minus tensor minus iota also works. Why? Because this is actually equal to x times minus tensor y times minus iota, right? Uh, this is equal to minus minus one. The, the first guy and the second guy is minus minus iota, right? Uh, this is from the properties over here, right? And then I can, uh, realize that the minus signs cancel out and I get minus tensor minus iota. Right, so uh, this is equal to this. Therefore, I can, uh, can start. Right, so uh, I've also realized that I've made a slight error. Oh no, I knew it was gonna happen. Okay, sorry. Uh, This is what I wanted to do. So do you believe me, right? That if I have uh, X tensor Y, then it has two, uh, so X tensor Y has stabilizer states, uh, which are either plus, uh, plus iota 
and minus minus iota. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm not giving you uh, motivation right now. You will see this motivation in basically the next two or three slides. Uh, Oscar, that is not quite correct. So a stabilizer state is a plus one eigenstate of any operator, right? So, I mean, let me write that down as well here. Uh, plus one eigen state of an operator. Okay, so that's what we are doing. We have, we have in these calculations, we have shown that, for example, x tends to y, if I multiply with this, I get plus one as, uh, uh, this is uh, this is an eigen state of this guy, and it has a plus one eigen value, and this is also an eigen state of this guy, and it has a plus one eigen value. But also any linear combination of them. I think this is important to note, right? That I mean. If I have something like plus, plus iota, uh, plus beta, minus, minus iota, that is also a plus one eigenstate uh, of this guy because when I multiply this, this gives up uh, from the left, I get uh, plus one over here, I get plus one over here. So the, the state doesn't change and the eigenvalue, overall eigenvalue is also plus one. So, Basically, what we are really saying is that this is a basis for the stabilizer uh, space associated with this operator, but we don't really have to get into those uh, things. Anyway, uh, let's kind of move on. We are short on time, and we just have a couple of these concepts left. So uh, what I want to do is also discuss the stabilized states of multiple operators of uh, or maybe I should add the word simult simultaneous. Okay. That if I have multiple operators, I can sometimes, not always, but sometimes I can find uh, that they have the same, or at least some of their stabilizer states are the same. Okay, so uh, let me let me give an example over here. We will we will construct everything. So let's look at this. So Z tensor Z tensor I has stabilizer states. Uh, can anyone guess what the states are? Uh, so Z Z die. Zero zero and SI, yeah, that's one possibility. But Bakao actually gets it uh, like specifies it, right? So we are, like I said, we are interested in finding the basis. So we can actually just have this. So you can see that zero, zero, zero works. Zero, zero, one works. One, one. Zero. Yes, so one, one, one. Okay, so given the variety of responses, I feel like a lot of people are understanding, right? You can see that all of these states are the plus one eigenvalue of this, right? If I hit this, the first guy with this, zero and zero, right? So Z times zero is plus uh, zero and Z times zero is plus zero, right? So this works and then these guys work because both of these first two guys will give a minus eigenvalue and then the multiplication of those minus eigenvalue gives you a plus one. 
and similarly for here the last guy doesn't matter right identity so i can i can choose these uh, this guy as zero and one and then any linear combination of that will give me psi right as as uh Mohammed Raza correctly pointed out that uh if if i want psi on on the last guy which is what i really want uh i i can just take the linear combination of these guys or the linear combination of these guys appropriately so similarly you can see that z tensor i Y to no, let me let me instead of doing this, let me do I tensor Z tensor uh, Z has stabilizer states. You can see by the same thing, I will put uh, and then I will put zero one 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 right. So the again the idea is that I must either put two zeros or two ones in the last two entries so that the appropriate minus signs cancel out. So you can see uh, that intersection is of these two sets is that I is zero 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 and one one one. Uh, sorry. So oh, let me delete this. Right. So, so what is special about this is that this is simultaneously stabilized. So this guy is simultaneously stabilized. by uh, Z tensor, Z tensor I, and I tensor, Z tensor, Z. Okay, and what was 0, 0, 0 and 1, 1, 1? What are these two states? Where did we see them before? Repetition code, right? So we saw this in a repetition code. These are these were the basis states of the repetition code. So so finally we have we have kind of come back and made that connection. So what we will really see, I mean, and the way that we construct these codes is that we we have this collection of operators and we find the simultaneously stabilized states of them. Basis of rep code, right? Quantum rep code. I want to point out one more connection in ZZI, IZZ, which you did in the notebooks. So let's go over here. And if you did 4.4, notebook syndrome measurements and alternate view if you worked your way through this remember that for the repetition code for bit flips we found an alternate way of doing this right and do you see what this is this operator like i mean if you ignore the c naughts do you see that there's z z identity uh, which is exactly this Z Z identity, and then the other guy is identity Z Z, which is exactly this. So we are right at the cusp. We are we are almost seeing it. That from these operators you can construct both the basis states, and you can construct the syndrome measurements as well. So let's let's just dig into this. Uh, thank you, Pablo. Uh, I'm sure you can catch the rest uh, 
on the in the recording. So uh, the quiz will hopefully not be very difficult. I, I'll try. I, I know the math is difficult, so I, I, I'll try to make it uh, not too difficult. Uh, stabilizer groups. So, I mean, we want to make this systematic, right? So, I, again, I just gave you an example. I just came up with two uh, operators and I said, "Hey, look, let's look at the st simultaneous stabilizer states of these operators." But I want to give you give you some more structure of where these operators are coming from. So, stabilizer groups. Are these are subgroups of the polygroup? Right? So they are subgroups, but we'll just call them groups because we use them so much. Uh, okay. Okay, and they have what what sort of subgroups are they with properties? So they have two properties. One is all elements. So I will use the symbol S to represent them. Okay. So all elements uh, of S. Sorry, uh, maybe I should. Uh, uh, I, I don't mean all the subgroups. I mean one particular group. So of uh, stabilizer group s commute and uh, minus identity uh, tensor identity uh, tensor however many well let's just write like this uh, However many eyes are there is not part of S. So property with number one uh, is really the critical one. The second one is, uh, uh, is trivial once I explain why this is included. So basically we are saying that we are going to include, uh, we are going to look at subgroups, right? So remember what are subgroups again? So we are going to, inside my polygroup, I am going to find an H, not just any arbitrary H, right? I want H which, in which all elements commute with each other, right? Or all pairs of elements commute. That's really what, uh, sorry, where, which way I'm going. So you can see in our example, this was our first example of a subgroup. And you can see that iota and z actually commute, right? I, I z is actually equal to z i. They're both equal to z. So this is actually a stabilizer uh, group of or uh, subgroup of P one. Uh, these guys are not a, a stabilizer group because, uh, as you know. Uh, I mean, I mean, this has, for example, um, X times identity times identity and has Z times identity times identity. And you know, X and Z don't commute with each other. So this is, this is not a stabilized subgroup. Similarly for this uh, guy, we can, uh, I mean, this was not even a subgroup, so we can't even process it. So, I mean, in our example, Iota Z is a stabilizer subgroup or stabilizer group. I'll, I'll just write group, okay? But you have to remember that's a subgroup uh, in P1. Uh, but I think I need to give you another example at least, right? So let's, I mean, because we are working with this example of, and we realized that this, these guys had some connection with, with the repetition code. So let, let's construct this guy. So uh, let's look at Z tensor Z tensor identity. Let me call this P1. 
and let me call p2 identity tensor z tensor z okay and now notice that if i do p1 square that is just identity tensor identity tensor identity and if i do p1 times p2 right i'm multiplying these guys so z times i is z z times z is identity and i times z is actually z so let me call this guy p0 and let me call this guy p3 so and then let's say p0 p1 p2 p3 Yeah, so, uh, and I claim is a stabilizer group, right? So it is clearly a group, okay? You can see that, I mean, the first thing we have to check, is it, uh, is it a subgroup? I mean, it is a subgroup, right? So, I mean, this, this is a check that we have to do. So, I mean, let's uh, go through our uh, checks very quickly and ask ourselves, is it a subgroup? So, uh, I mean, that's necessary, right? A stabilizer groups are subgroups. So, closure. So, is it closed? Obviously, it is closed. The way I've constructed it is actually closed, right? Because you can check that, I mean, if I multiply P1 with P2, I get P3, right? You can also check that if I multiply P1 with P3, I will get P2. And if I multiply P2 with P3, I'll get P1. And, um, and if I square any of them, I will get identity. So it is actually closed. Uh, the identity is part of it. The, all of these guys are self-inverse. So actually this works. So it is a subgroup. Okay, so that is the first thing. Uh, all pairs commute. So we don't have to check all uh, pairs because I mean, uh, well, you should, but I mean, because there's so much symmetry, I can just check two guys. So I can check that uh, P1, ten, uh, P1, P2 is actually equal to P3, right? But P2, P1 is also equal to P3. Right, this is actually very easy to see. Uh, we al already computed P1, P2, but we can check that if we go the other way, we still get this guy. So, uh, and then you can check that any other pair that you work, right? So, so this is an example. Uh, so this actually works as well, right? And minus identity inside is uh, not in S. And that's also true. Minus identity is not part of uh, S either, right? When I when I write I, just one I, I just mean the tensor product of uh, three I's uh, because we're talking about the P3 here. Right, so do you believe me that this is a stabilizer group because it has satisfied all the properties of the stabilizer group? Uh, we will get to why the, uh, it's a, uh, I'll, I'll explain that in a second. What's the second problem? Yes. So can you, uh, you uh, Ron has an excellent uh, thing. Can you use fewer tests on subgroups to prove closure? Yes. Actually, you just have to uh, check that uh, it's closed. Uh, you just have to check if it's closed. Uh, other other uh, checks are not important. Uh, there, there's a theorem for that in the notebooks as well. For finite group, that works. For infinite groups, you have to check everything. But for night goods, disclosure is sufficient. Uh, Durgesh has written something. I don't understand what that means. Minus identity tensor, I, tensor this is not in S. That is our second that is our second property of stabilizer groups, uh, which is that this should not be. So,
uh, are the stabilized states of x tensor x plus 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 and minus minus minus. Uh, minus 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 is not a stabilized state of x tensor x tensor x because it will give a minus sign. The first two, there will be three minus signs that will come out and uh, two of them will cancel out. Yeah, sorry. So one of had a question, uh, had a comment, abelian subgroup. Yes, so stabilizer groups are abelian subgroups of, uh, of the polygroups which do not have a minus i in them. Uh, uh, minus iota y uh, fails because its inverse is not inside. So it's not even a subgroup. Right? So you have to at least include minus iota y. If you add a third element in it, then you can discuss. Uh, and then you will realize that multiplying uh, things together will give you minus iota identity. So anyway, uh, I think we have some intuition that what we can do. So what have we learned uh, up till now? We have learned that you can construct these very nice subgroups of the polygroup, which have these two additional properties. Okay? And uh, so basically what, and you have learned, I mean, I've introduced this subgroup, particularly this guy, which is connected to the repetition code again, right? So because I constructed this, I showed that these two guys were connected with the repetition code, code and now I've constructed this whole group. So I just have to go over one more property, which is actually self-evident, actually. Uh, generators of a group. Uh, So uh, this is like a basis. I will put this in of a group. Okay. So remember that uh, a basis of vector space. You can write any other element as a uh, as a uh, as a linear combination of the basis of a vector space, right? So what is a generator of a group? A subset of elements. whose products uh, give uh, can be used to create any element oh uh, of group. Elements and the element of the group. Okay, so I've already given an example here, right? So over here, if I uh, look at this uh, guy, Uh, I, I want to give an example. Oh no. Uh, okay. So, P, uh, and, and, and I said that S was equal to uh, P0, P1, P2, P3, right? So, the generators of S are P1 and P2. Right, and again, you can see that this property is satisfied. I can multiply 
I can construct any element of S by taking products of just P1 and P2, right? So if I want to construct P1, I just take P1 itself. If I want to construct P2, I just take P2 itself. If I want to construct P0, I multiply. Uh, if I take the square of P1 or the square of P2, uh, and if I want to construct P3, I take their product, P1 and P2, right? So every element of uh, S can be constructed by multiplying a subset of these elements, right? The subset, the subset of no other, they are not a subgroup or anything like that. Don't confuse it with that. The sub, the subset has a, just the property that multiplying them together can produce any element of the group. So uh, this is all that we need. Uh, to now define stabilizer codes. Okay. So before we had this picture, we said that we had uh, our qubits in um, as k, uh, as the Hilbert space of k qubits. And then we had uh, our code space, which was the tensor part, uh, which was the uh, space of n qubits, right? The Hilbert space of n qubits. And the code itself was inside here, right? So now we have this additional structure, right? This is what we have constructed. We have said that we have the polygroup on n qubits. Remember that this n is the same as, as this n now. I'm, I'm talking about. So if, if, I, if I have n, then I will construct something uh, like this. And I have S over here, which is some stabilizes subgroup, right? So S is some stabilizer group, okay? Uh, in fan CPN. So I have S here, and from this S, I can figure out what I'm. What we can do is we can go from here to here, right? What we are looking for, right? So a, what is a code? A code is a mapping from this space to this space, this code, right? From the message space to the code, which is a sub subspace of the code space. And we have to come up with a systematic way of constructing that mapping. And that mapping comes from identifying this S. So we, we pick an S inside our polygroup, a stabilizer group inside a polygroup. And from that, we construct this mapping. So I've already given you an example of this. So I said the repetition code. So we, we said that this, this group is actually associated. So, uh, with the repetition code. So if I if I take this group, right, that's over here, uh, n is equals to three, right? And I said, hey, the, the encoding just comes from finding the simultaneous uh, uh, I, simultaneous stabilizer states of these operators. And what were these operators? We just found out that uh, these operators are actually the uh, generators, right? So we just discovered that P1, uh, P1 and P2 are actually the generators of this group S. And from this, we can construct this encoding. I can, uh, does this make sense? I, uh, any other, uh, so uh, yeah, please tell me if you're with me, I've completely lost me or what, uh, I will completely lost you or whatever. So Ron has a question when you multiply the subgroup. I'm not multiplying subgroups. I'm multiplying elements of this subgroup together to construct the gen. I, I'm sure you're referring to generators and I'm, I'm multiplying elements of S, which are P1 and P2 together. So our example, I mean, let's write that example down. So that we had, that our example is that Z tensor, Z tensor I 
um, I tensor Z tensor Z, I tensor I tensor I, and then uh, Z tensor. Let me write it here. Right, so this was our S. These two guys are generators of S. And what we have discovered is that uh, this S can be used to construct a quantum code. Uh, called rep code for bit flips. Where uh, the encoding zero goes to zero 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 and one goes to one 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 right these are the simultaneous stabilizer states of the generator of s And the other thing that we discovered was that uh, uh, the syndrome measurements of uh, the rep code are equal to measuring the generators of us, right? Because this guy, well, so I mean, this guy is measure. Uh, Z tensor, Z tensor I, and then this guy is measure uh, I tensor Z tensor Z. So Uh, Bacow, in practice, are we going the opposite direction, meaning we build simultaneous stabilizer for the vector basis of a circuit and we use them as a generator for stability? No. So, so uh, we only went backwards because we started with some simple examples and we wanted to place those examples in our new formalism and see that it works. But uh, we absolutely do not. We absolutely start from the from uh, the these this uh, stabilizer group. And then we construct the the encoding and the uh, syndrome measurements and uh, something as well, uh, and and then there are very systematic ways of constructing these stabilizer code, right? So I've, I've again I've not really simplified the problem. I've just said that hey, if you can find a stabilizer group inside uh, your polygroup, then you can construct uh, you can you can construct a quantum code associated with it. Right, so maybe I should say this explicitly. For every stabilizer group inside your polygroup, you can uh, you can construct a quantum code. Right, whether it's a good code or a nice code, or that's a separate discussion. But for, but for every stabilizer group, you can construct a quantum code. Now, to do that more systematically, you need you need to go one uh, even one step back, and you can ask yourself the question: How do I systematically create stabilizer groups? And that problem is is actually quite nice because then you do things like you know you map 
you take some very nice graph and from that graph you construct the stabilizer group or uh, you know you have some other kind of uh, nice uh, st symmetric structure and from that symmetric structure you construct the stabilizer code you can see there's symmetry here they are uh, always applying z on two different qubits so that kind of symmetry uh, uh, works at a much larger basis as well so david has an excellent question can p1 and p3 be generators as well yes so uh, maybe i should have said this I uh, didn't want to confuse you that generators are not unique. So you'll see this in the notebook uh, explicitly that generators are not unique and you can pick any two. Uh, well, in this case, you can pick two different guys. So you can pick P1 and P3 or P2 and P3 and that will work as well. Obviously, P1 and P, uh, P1 and P0 will not work because then you can't construct other things. But if you take two, any two non-identity elements of this guy, you will, there will be generators. Uh, So um, I think I should stop now. So if there are no, uh, I, if there are questions, uh, please ask. Uh, I'm ob obviously, if you ask questions later, I'll answer them in Discord as well. Uh, I know I've, I've dumped a whole lot of stuff on you, uh, but uh, this, I mean, if you go to the notebooks, hopefully it will be clear. Um, if not, please ask me. Um, you. Yeah, so property screen. So uh, of stabilizer groups or, or, or of the group? Sorry. Poly. Uh, well, okay. I, I don't know whether you mean poly or what. I'll, I'll hold this for a second and then I'll, I'll go to the other one. Uh, I, while I'm here, I should comment on the other part. Why do we need minus identity is not a part of S. The reason for that is actually quite simple. If your minus identity as part of your, uh, of your stabilizer group or your subgroup, then you can't construct plus one eigenstates. Remember that if I multiply minus identity with any psi, I get minus psi, which is not a plus one eigenstate, right? By definition. So, uh, well, sorry. Well, I, I should not say that, uh, but uh, I think I need to construct more. But basically, if you include minus identity, then then you you are you are able to construct my minus. Uh, uh, you you are not able to nicely create plus one eigenstates. So so uh, so so you have to exclude. Uh, poly. So. Not poly. Uh, so poly, I did not. Uh, so poly was here. I mean, the 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 definition of poly group is just the tensor product of uh, polys where pi are p one. There's nothing special, uh, very complex about this. But then we had this guy, which was that groups have this thing, that closure identity inverse and associativity. Okay, next question. Are there any references to Python code that can do calculation of finding stabilizer groups? Uh, um, uh, yes and no, uh, there are, but I mean, I don't think you are at the stage where you can understand them. So hold off on them. Let's, let's end the workshop and then we can discuss. Yeah, now uh, I, I, I really should stop because we're over time. And the property screen you reference with the eigenstates. Eigenstates, these guys. This one? So I'll, I'll be posting these uh, right now. Uh, as soon as the lecture ends, I will post them in the Discord channel itself or of, of the QEC Discord uh, channel. So you can look at the side as much as you want. Okay, so trying again, are the stabilizer states of x tensor, x tensor, plus, 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 minus, minus, 
uh, minus plus plus. Uh, yeah, I think that is correct. Uh, am I missing something? They should be. Yeah, I think we should stop now. Uh, you can keep asking questions and I'll answer, but I think it's best if we let people uh, go. Thank you so much for uh, interacting so much today. I, I know that, uh, I guess the, the lesson for me is to teach difficult so people ask questions. Uh, Amazing. Thank you so much, Abdullah. Really great lecture. And uh, I think everyone is bearing for the quiz. I will uh, I will briefly share my screen. We had a great brainstorm uh, session at the start, and I compiled the ideas. Um, as you can see here, let me zoom in a bit. Okay, uh, we have uh, around forty ideas from the brief brainstorm this morning. General ideas: teach each other, uh, recruit participants to teach, journal club, apply knowledge to solve real world problems. Uh, then timing, winter boot camp, or actually in weekends, and then a whole range of topics. Look at this. Uh, this is almost 30 uh, series and, and uh, boot camps or schools to cover. Really amazing ideas. Thanks so much. Um, uh, we will meet with the team tomorrow and discuss how we can take this further and also get more of your input and see how we can collaborate all of us to, to make these things happen. So we will also include this in a feedback form at the end so you can detail it in, uh, in, uh, in some more words and feel free anytime to email to quantum at romanium.org with all your ideas. 